Does the color of the sky mean anything special to you? It does to me. A hell of a lot. When I close my eyes, the sky in my dreams is a deep, dark blue. Pilots have been in my family for four generations. Flying's in my DNA. Even so, my grandpa didn't want me joining the Air Force. He lost faith in the Ocean Air Defense the day my dad died in battle. You know, Abby, I wish you could see what it's like up there. Cruising above the clouds, the dark blue of the stratosphere. Nothing beats being at the controls and seeing it from the cockpit. Look here. Gramps tossed a magazine over to me with an article. Unmanned fighters are no longer a dream, it read. Pilots taking to the skies will soon be a distant memory. I don't see anything good coming from that. Know what? Lying smack dab in the middle of the desert west of here, there's a bunch of planes from the last war. Some of them have been mothballed, but most of them are just rusted piles of junk waiting to be scrapped. Gramps was really good friends with the super there, so he got to take whatever he wanted, no questions asked. That's how we got the parts to build our own plane. Now, when I say we, I mean me, my grandpa, and his old war buddies. I cut my teeth working with those geezers. They taught me their skills and some dirty jokes. But with their aging eyeballs and whatnot, I ended up having to do most of the work myself. I was at the airstrip doing some flight training when I saw it. A prototype drone. It wasn't much of a plane, more of a trash can with wings. Laugh at it all you want, kid. But technology's always changing. If you don't keep up with it, it'll leave your ass behind. It took six years and eight months to get that engine running. And it took us another year and a half after that to finally get the balance of the airframe just right. I'd gone from being a little girl to, well, still a girl, just older. But now, I was all alone. <sighs> Wherever the souls of my Gramps and his pals are flying, I hope it's peaceful. Then, finally, I was ready to break the sound barrier. All this plane could do was take off, accelerate, and fly up. as fighters. They were tailing something. A drone. They were going full out chasing that thing. Doing 30 Gs at least. Damn, I've never seen anything move that fast. It had a rose painted on it. The Erusion emblem. But that country's a whole continent away from here. Crap. should have been a best of piece of junk. Should have built a return to... Is everyone here? Settle down. I said settle down. You have all been instrumental in helping to maintain peace in Yuzha as members of the International Union Peacekeeping Force. Until today. Earlier, 
Our radar site informed us that a group of unidentified aircraft was approaching. Communication systems went down immediately afterwards. We are led to conclude that they have attacked the site. Here's your mission. It's possible that the Yuzhen ceasefire agreement has been broken for the first time in over a decade. As of today, the Fort Gray's Air Base Squadron of the IUPF has been put on high alert. All members who have been ordered to sortie, fly there immediately. Find the unidentified craft, then use your weapons to round them up and force them to land. If the hostiles counterattack, then you will... What the hell was that? There's smoke! We're under attack. Numerous unidentified aircraft have burned overhead. What? How is that possible? The tank farm to the north has been bombed. Many injured. Scramble. All units, take off and eliminate the unidentified craft attacking the base. This is not a drill. Squadron aircraft preparations complete. Stand by at the front. Radar sight still silent. Scramble. Get those birds in the sky. We're sitting ducks. What's happening? Bombers income. Don't know how many. Let's clear that runway. We don't got all day here. Main squadron head to runway. Column squadron take off. Link to Skykeeper. Hurry, main squadron. Side is page two. Verify and read back. Page two, clear for takeoff. Your situation is tight. It's a hell of a welcoming party, but we have faith in you. Good luck. Control, do me a favor and get that bird in the air ASAP. You're not on fire, Column squadron and your wingmen are airborne. Take off and form up with page one. Page two, altitude restriction is lifted. Good luck. The carrier. Whoa, looks like the harbor's taken a lot of damage. Can't have any more casualties. Time to stop the bullshit. Mage 2, form up with Mage 1. All aircraft, let's do this. Golem Squadron, it's go time. Roger that. Golem 4, understood. This is the AWACS Skykeeper. Take down all unidentified bombers. They don't have many escorts. They hit our radars hard in the last attack. Expect the worst and stay sharp. We'll go. Trigger, I'm your wingman. You fly with me now. That's what it means to be in an element. You gotta keep an eye out for enemy bombers. Okay, here we go. Looks like bombers have been located. Enemy bomber confirmed down. Good job, Mage 2. Not bad, Mage 2. Trigger, switch your radar. See if you can locate the enemy. There it is, sitting there all pretty, just waiting to be taken. Target confirmed. 
Confirmed down. Looking good, Mage 2. Mage 2, targets in range. Prepare bombers. Trigger, stay calm. You got this. I know the kid's shown some promise, but let's remember, he's still barely got his feet wet.
try and beat back. Page two, clear for takeoff. We are currently assessing the damage to the base. We have confirmed that the aircraft carrier Albatross was sunk. We know the attacking bogies were from Arusia. International Union peacekeeping force bases all over the Yuzhin continent were attacked in the same way. The damage is severe. Many wars are lost by failing to recover from the opening blows. That means successfully retaliating was very important. You may have turned the tides of battle here. You have our thanks. As of 1 p.m. today, the Kingdom of Arugia has declared war on the Ocean Federation. As soon as the news broke out, enemy aircraft began bombing Ocean territory, causing widespread destruction. The Air Defense Force has released a statement saying this violent attack was carried out by drones. They speculate the drones were secretly transported to Ocea in shipping containers and launched remotely. The Secretary of the Navy has stated that the enemy was targeting naval ports across the country. According to the Secretary, all of the nation's aircraft carriers, including one still under construction, sustained severe damage in the attacks. We have yet to hear back from the Department as to the fate of Ocean carriers currently at sea. Hold on. I've just received breaking news. The International Space Elevator, which is being built in southern Yuzha, has been seized by the Erusian Army. Reports say former President Harling was touring the site at the time, but his current whereabouts are unknown. Our sources in government tell us it was Harling's policies regarding the space elevator that caused economic frictions in the area, and which ultimately led to this war. Located near Erugia, on the continent of Yuzha, the space elevator has been under construction for some time now. The Executive Office of the Ocean Federation has declared a national state of emergency. They have ordered all its armed forces, including Yuzhin peacekeepers, to mobilize and make the necessary preparations to launch an immediate counterattack. Ladies and gentlemen, our country is officially at war. Stay tuned for further updates. Breaking news from ENN. Osea launched an attack on the capital today, striking Farbanti from their aircraft carrier, the Kestrel II. After a brutal battle, the Erujian Air Force successfully repelled them. During the air raid, the Ocean Air Force fired missiles at the city and managed to shoot down a number of Erujian fighters. Some of the disabled planes then crashed into residential areas. The world was screwed. Twenty years ago, the Earth got slammed by an asteroid. Yuja was on the wrong side of the planet and got hit. Hard. Refugees swarmed the Erujian Republic, the biggest country on the continent, plunging it into chaos. They were desperate and started a war, one they had no hope of winning. That's the war my dad fought and died in. The biggest nations from two continents went head to head, and the so-called righteous Oceans struck the deal that ended it. They fancied themselves the only nation that could bring peace and stability to the world. They even tried saving the Yuzhins, still suffering from the disaster. That's how a space elevator, stretching way up into the sky, ended up being built in Yuzha, paid for by the Oceans. President Harling said he did it out of compassion for his fellow humans. But to the folks in Arusia, it looked like Osea was moving in to take over. Arusia went from being a republic, back to being a kingdom. When they started this new war, they managed to get the drop on everyone. The second the declaration hit the news, Erujian forces took control of the space elevator without spilling a single drop of blood. President Harling was touring the elevator when it happened and disappeared. Then, while that was going on, the Erujian ships that were docked all around Osea released a swarm of drone fighters they had hidden on board in containers. No one thought they were capable of doing what they did that day. With pinpoint accuracy, they managed to take out everything that was military, and not a single civilian was hurt in the process. Osea pissed lots of people off with their huge military presence around the world. Erujia didn't have the same reach, but they could hit their targets faster and cleaner. 
And when all this was going down, I just so happened to be in my flying drag racer. In case you were wondering, yeah, I survived. I crashed in a bombed out Ocean Air Force Base, then got arrested for breaking wartime aviation laws or some crap. The world went from being at peace to being at war, all in the blink of an eye. I was tried, found guilty, and stuffed into a cargo ship. For company, I had some court-martialed soldiers. And remember those mothballed planes I told you about before? They were loaded on the ship, too. We headed off down south for several days, and then swung east. That's how I got here. I was thousands of kilometers from Arusia, on the opposite side of the Yuzian continent. For a port, it was dull as hell. It had three rusty patrol boats. And the base? The fences were topped with razor wire. The tower had a searchlight and machine guns. And a truck with a gun turret was parked in front of the gate. Its gun was aimed at the yard. This was a prison. This place looked like a full-on base. But half the tanker trucks were just big balloons. And the runways weren't even paved, just painted on the dirt. The whole place was just one big, fat lie. The only reason I was here is because they knew I'd restored a supersonic plane. They wanted me to make something out of the mothballed planes they brought that they could park on the fake runway. Can you believe that shit? So, I tried to escape. <laughs> they found out and set the dogs on me. Eruja has made a declaration to the Ocean Federation and all countries on the Yuzhen continent stationing the IUN peacekeeping force that we are now at war. Right after the declaration was made, surprise attacks began around the continent that have inflicted major damage to our armed forces. Forces aligned with Eruja are currently appearing throughout Yuzhen. The combination of these forces has overwhelmed the majority of the continent, and they are now encroaching on us in the east. Additionally, the multinational space elevator has been seized by the Erusian military. After the previous war, the space elevator became both a symbol of peace and a valuable asset in the fight against growing energy concerns. Whoever has control of it will have enormous influence over the entire continent. We cannot turn a blind eye to this critical situation. The Fort Gray's Air Base Squadron has been entered into the order of battle to reclaim the elevator as an advance element. First, you will attack all hostiles coming in the east of Schofield Plateau to stop any interference with the Allied ground troops. The enemy has deployed several vehicles equipped with anti-air radar along the roads. You are to destroy them. They should not pose much of a threat. However, there is a high likelihood that the attack will draw more enemy air support. If that happens, fight them off swiftly and establish air superiority.
Approach Squadron, sorry, ASAP. Target is on rails, but there's still military vehicles and anti-air weaponry. Destroy the target. But HQ has made it clear that no harm should come to civilians and no damage is to be done to public facilities. But, uh, any aircraft shot down could land in civilian territory. No point arguing. That's how war is these days. Do you have visual on the anti-air radar vehicles? They should be close. Yep. Target is in range of guns. Status report. 
Multiple bogeys on radar. They're close. Wait, they're being launched. You're clear to engage. They're probably hostile. Judging by the way they look and move, Nicole. they gotta be drones. Well spotted, clown. No doubt about it, we're dealing with UAVs. But that doesn't change a thing. Just think of them as somewhat clever decoys. Take them all down. These drones have great agility. All aircraft. You know what high G turns are, right? Use them. HQ, this is Gollum 1. Bandits confirmed as UAVs. Repeat, bandits are drones. Gollum 1, that doesn't matter. Destroy all enemy fighters and get out. It doesn't matter. He's saying the war can change in an instant. Get over it. Yeah, I just wish they'd give us a bit more warning. Behind target and ready to attack. Missile. Gollum Squadron, surround him. Enemy UAV confirmed destroyed. Hell yeah. Gollum Squadron, you're not gonna let Mage get all the glory, are ya? Three enemies to go. I'm buying dinner for anyone who takes down an enemy. There's a bar I wanna try. You're doing good. <laughs> Just two more. Trigger. Enemy aircraft confirmed down. The skies are clear. Nice work, everyone. Mission complete. RTP. No casualties. We couldn't have done any better. Returning to base. I don't know. Maybe the bandits we took down caused civilian casualties. No point arguing. That's how war is these days. You shoot, someone gets killed. The guy's in charge. Take care of the rest. You've given us air superiority by destroying their radar. The first barrier keeping us from retaking the space elevator is gone. Now is the time to group up and begin the counteroffensive. Let us reclaim what is ours. The surprise attacks carried out after the declaration of war saw the peacekeeping forces of various countries, including Osea, suffer major damage. The ships moored around the space elevator and near Gandar Bay have been hit particularly hard. Numerous ships have been sunk and abandoned. Fortunately, our cutting-edge aircraft carrier Kestrel-2 was at sea, so it was spared from the attack. Kestrel-2 is now preparing to launch another attack against Arugia's capital, Farbanti. The aircraft carrier Vulture also managed to escape Gandar Bay safely. However, it lost all its aircraft, so it's sailing empty. Today, the International Union Peacekeeping Force reclaims its bid to the space elevator. The 
Fort Gray's Island Air Base Squadron will rendezvous with the carrier Vulture for a joint mission. The first objective will be to seize air superiority in Choppenburg in order to secure a route for the support squadrons. The enemy maintains air superiority over Choppenburg, so expect heavy resistance from enemy aircraft. There's more, so listen carefully. Right from the start of the war, the enemy has been deploying drones. They're using a new, advanced type of drone. The unmanned airborne aircraft carrier, the Arsenal Bird, carries this new drone, MQ-101. The Ocean Army headed up the development of the massive Arsenal Birds and dispatched them to the space elevator to provide support. However, it's been reported that the carriers may have fallen into the hands of the Erujian forces. If that's true, it could be a significant obstacle for us. We need to regain control of the space elevator ASAP. Good luck out there. Squadron aircraft preparations complete. Squadron, this is the situation. Gollum and the other base's squadrons already joined forces and are engaged. You guys will arrive right in the middle of the action. Mage Squadron, eliminate all bandits in the current airspace. We have the upper hand, but that doesn't mean we can ease up. Good luck. Mage 1, Wilco. Mage 1 to Gollum 1, thank your lucky stars. Looking good, Mage Squadron. Keep up that pressure. Trigger time to show the other guys that we get wet wild and do dirty, dirty things. Once you hit one of them, stick to them like glue. Don't let them out of your sights, even in the clouds. And so, your first hunting season begins. Don't let those turkeys do your kill. Enemy reinforcements. I don't like these odds. Box two. Grab three. He's bailing out. Get off me. 
Looks like they weren't ready for a fight. Our radar shows no sign of bandits. You're in the clear. I haven't even broken a sweat. They have to be crazy to pick a fight with us. A rabid dog would know better. Missile incoming! Invade! Break! Break! Wait, what the hell? Caution! Missile! Caution! A large aircraft is Solar warning. Solar warning. 
Spotted. Gargoyle Squadron, they might cut off your retreat. My status is fine. This is Gargoyle 1. Leading Operation Airplane from Column 2. Retreating aircrafts, prepare for combat. It's a bogey. Gargoyle 1, Column 2, engage now. Attack. One bandage. SU-30. Gargoyle 1, caution! Missile! What the hell? Column 2, status report. <sighs> Just talk to me. I'm against an SU-30. Orange wingtips. I can't shake it off. It's matching me move for move. Column 2, stop dogfighting and run. <sighs> Column and main squadron, help us! Get those UAVs off of friends! Yowza! The longer it takes, the worse our odds of getting out of here are. The machines don't get tired. An ally's hit! Gollum and Mage, move in to provide support! Let's move! They're ours! Mage 2, missile launch. That a boy, Mage 2. Just keep firing. This is our only loss. Missed. Let Gollum and Mage 2 on his handle it. They'll go through. Get your asses out. Not on my watch. Mage 2, provide cover for Allied retreat. Mage 2, UAV down. Keep it up, buddy. Fort Grey's aircraft. We want you to take it easy next time. I did meet. I don't get it. Why isn't it opening fire? I'm scared. Not good. Brownie, break off. Got one in my sights. Does main squadron still have their hot shot? Just might make it out. Don't look back, just have faith. Call them the main, we know you again. And we'll pay it. You're running out of missiles. Off my ass. I'm tied up now. Trigger, can you help him? Target down. I see him. Second, could need life or death for him. Hurry up. I know. All we can do is fly away as fast as we can. You'll have a good job, Mage 2. We want as many guys out here as possible. I'm grateful you're around. Pillow 2, what's your status? Status report. He's a predator. <laughs> Column 2, get a hold of yourself. Column 2, get away from the enemy.
was the right decision at the time. No, I should have never let a fledgling like her out of my reach to begin with. Golem Squadron, Mage Squadron, withdraw. Unfortunately, the two-front offensive was a failure. The aircraft carrier Kestrel II was sunk during the attack on Farbanti. Carrier-borne aircraft mistakenly bombed urban areas, and this has turned public opinion in neutral countries against us. Our own forces also suffered heavy losses. If it weren't for a few extraordinary fighters, many of us wouldn't have made it home. The situation is grim. We have precious little time, however. We have to get to the space elevator. Here he comes. looking worse. Thank God he has his granddaughters here to help him out. They're sisters, 15 and 10. Engaging the enemy in combat so we could use his physiological data to improve the drones had always taken a toll on Mihai's body. But today, he was really showing his age. The drones we based on his data were being taken down at a faster rate now compared to when the war began. When Mihai found that out, he insisted on flying to the front lines to see it for himself. Sometimes he could be so stubborn. His age wasn't the only thing affecting his health. Over the years, flying at high altitudes for prolonged stretches of time had ravaged and poisoned his body. But he was a man of grit. Today, after 28 years, he saw combat again. If his flight suit still wasn't good enough to protect him, I can't imagine how many Gs he hit today during the battle. As a pilot, he exceeds all our expectations. It's going to take a bit more tweaking before our drones can match his skill. How penal is this penal unit, you ask? This place is a shithole. If you took the stink of all the corruption in the world, then corralled it all in one place, that would give you a pretty good idea of what the air smells like around here. We got all kinds of critters, too. Everything from flea-ridden guards, rabid dogs, and a mechanic doing a stretch for life. I can't forget the rats. Yeah, we got those. And some pilots who got their wings clipped, too. One's a great pilot, but a lousy thief. One's a gambler with no luck and one's an anarchist with no balls. Their job here was to rev the engines on the fake runways. The idea was for Arusha's spy satellite to pick up the heat sig. Even though there weren't any real fighters here, it looked like it on their infrared. 
I bet you're wondering, if Ferrugia lost the war, how come they still have a spy satellite? Because someone over there was smart enough to train a bunch of computer nerds to hack into half of Osea's satellites. That's how come. Every now and again, I'd try to bust out. And every single time, those damn dogs would drag me right back. When I was in my cell, I'd hear this voice coming from the guards' room. It was the Erujian princess rallying her people on the Erujian national broadcast. All us prisoners had become big fans of hers. You want to hear something funny? The guards were big fans too. I swear to God, every time she was on the air, they'd turn up the volume on the radio and sit there listening. I could see how someone like her could win the hearts and minds of soldiers and workers alike. When the princess said something, you could tell she meant every word. Lately, she'd been having more fun with her speeches, and that made her seem even more charming. You could say her charm was like a virus. Whenever she'd point out stuff that was wrong with Osea, the prisoners in here went nuts. Hell, if anyone knew how messed up Osea was, it was the prisoners. They'd shout, burn Osea down. No way am I just gonna sit here and rot away in this hellhole. Dark blue. Instead of building fake-ass planes to trick Arusia, I'm gonna build one that'll really take off. You can count on that. As proved by the failure of our previous strategy, the Arsenal Birds have bolstered the enemy's anti-air network. This will be difficult to overcome. However, we still need to get swiftly to the space elevator no matter what it takes. Someone there is counting on us. The hero of the Circumpacific War and the man who spearheaded the construction of the space elevator. Osea's former president, Mr. Harling. Mr. Harling was inspecting the elevator when the war broke out. He's been classified as missing since the elevator was taken over by the Erujian forces. However, according to the latest intel, a military officer accompanying Mr. Harling hid him inside the facility. Both are waiting for a chance to escape. Enemy anti-air radar network has been set up around the space elevator. It's likely a large squadron would be detected will send a single aircraft through the network and send in a rescue team soon after. A number of anti-air radars have been set up around the space elevator. However, our reconnaissance suggests their network is weakest along the southeastern coast of Selatapura, so we can elude the enemy's observation. There are a lot of rain clouds this time of year. Flying through the clouds will enable us to stay hidden from their radar. If you happen to be detected by their radar, we will be forced to abort the mission. The lone pilot will head up this strategy as you, Trigger. After you bust through, secure the rescue craft's landing zone by taking out the anti-air weapons. Gollum and others will arrive shortly for support. Provide escort for Mr. Harling's craft after rendezvous. Good luck out there, everyone.
Aircraft preparations complete. Sortie ASAP. Entering operation area. Imposing radio silence. We'll radio you, but you are not permitted to make contact. If you're spotted, the mission is over. Stay out of enemy radar. Use of weaponry is also strictly forbidden. Okay, you're heading up the Harling rescue mission. The success of this mission depends on you. Good luck. Careful of ice formation in the clouds. Enemy's got a lock. 
Target is in range of guns. All anti-air guns destroyed. The landing zone is secure. Sea Goblin, we're clear to land. Roger. Running from the wind side. We're almost there. Multiple bandits over Selatapura Harbor. Their container launched UAVs. Sea Goblin, here. We're up to meet on two enemies. Rescue craft tagged on. Rescue craft on the ground is defenseless. Gollum and Mage, destroy all hostiles. <sighs> it's been a long journey, but you're on the home stretch. Gargoyle will stand by near the space elevator. Sea Goblin, heading over to the X Prize's location now. Run for the container! You're being locked onto. <laughs> the space elevator. Stop them. Mage Squadron, Mother Goose 1 is heading south. Provide support. Skykeeper, bogey's on my radar. Bearing 220. Sighting confirmed as MQ-101, forerunner for Arsenal Bird. 
The big bird is coming, huh? Mage, protect Mother Goose 1. Shoot down any UAVs. Gollum, intercept the UAVs. Gollum 1 will kill. That last battle taught me a lot about those a-holes. Gollum 2, don't stray off on me. Always maintain element. Goku, forming up! Shot down. Where'd the missile come from? Mage 2 fired that. It was Ocean. A friendly missile hit him. Verifying the situation. Stop speculating. Friendly fire. I saw it. 
Mother Goose One exploded in air. No one could have survived. Looks like it tried to protect the elevator. The Rusian bastards, they just killed a hero. Mage One, was it Trigger? <sighs> Trigger was the closest. UAVs were crawling all over our objective. I told you to keep a goddamn eye on the hatchling. It must have been a mistake. Arsenal Bird is entering. All aircraft withdraw immediately. Trigger, you can't fly for a while. You understand. The operation to rescue former President Harling has failed. Sadly, there is no hope he survived. Trigger, you are suspected of assassinating the former president. There will be an inquiry. There will most probably be a court-martial. Bad news for us here at the prison. The enemy fell for our decoy base. With all the fake planes and trucks we had out, it must have looked to them like the Ocean Air Force was about to go on the attack. Day after day after day after day they bombed us. Ocea didn't give a damn. We weren't soldiers to them, so go ahead. Bomb us. In their eyes, we were expendable. Worth less than the fake planes in the bunkers. No biggie. While I made fake planes, they had me put together some working ones. Then, some genius at HQ decided we should send it up, so the base looked legit. Thankfully, we had people to crew them. It didn't matter what we were locked up here for anymore. Top brass needed pilots, and criminals were all they had. A crook, a gambler, an anarchist. Just your typical lowlifes. They threw each one of them in a cockpit and sent them up to intercept the enemy's planes. But in the end, it was all just for show. So, up they went, day after day after day. Today they tossed someone new into the mix. Wonder what he did to get sent here. My dad died flying for the Ocean Air Force. When your allies are surrounded, one of the most dangerous missions is giving them cover to retreat. Whoever signed up for that was a real hero. But even more dangerous than that was being the one who had to cover the rear guard's retreat. That was my dad's job. And one time, he called it off. Said it was too late for him. Said anyone else would have done the same. I found that out from a war buddy of his when he came to tell me how my dad died. The next time a retreat happened, my dad volunteered to be in the rear guard. Dumbass. He died all right. No one came to help. The news nearly broke me. With all the ways to get killed, that's gotta be the most pathetic one ever. Am I right? There's a rumor going around about another inmate. A guy they brought here a little while ago. Get this, talk in the cell block says he was sent here because he killed Harling. The president of Osea during the last war, remember? He's the one that sent my dad on that suicide mission. He's the reason I had to go live with my grandpa, and why me and Gramps started building a supersonic jet. He's the reason I ended up here. Maybe I should give that guy a thank you note for killing him. Nah. God, I hate the smell of this place. It's all fake and lies and bullshit. It reeks. All right, guys, I'll let you in on some juicy info. The new guy was found guilty by the International Union Peacekeeping Forces Court Martial. He is the murderer of Harling in the flesh. His tack name's Trigger. Now, as of today, he may be attached to the Ocean Air Force Base 444th Squadron. But that is just some symbolic bullshit. 
doesn't really matter if he's Harling's murderer or not. Every last one of you has been incarcerated for one reason or another. You cons have an obligation to atone for your crimes. A few of you in the penal unit know how to fly, and HQ needs to plug the deficit in our Air Force. So they proposed sending you guys on a reconnaissance mission to the Waipolo Mountains. But that idea was flat out rejected. Nope, you'll be atoning for your crimes right here at this base. This base is a decoy designed to draw enemy fire. And as members of this base, you'll be taking hits from the enemy. This will allow our forces to safely prepare a counterattack. Incoming! Switch off that alarm. It's just the usual. I thought Zapland was supposed to be an isolated area. Okay. I'm gonna need a few aircraft to scramble. Again? Wonder how many will do today. Uh, better than solitary. How many Enemy aircraft are. detected over the dummy runway. We just need to make it look like we can put up a fight. Some of those piles of junk can at least take off. Let's get the guiltiest cons in the sky first. We'll start with Harling's murderer. We don't expect you to down any bombers. But what we do want is to make them think that we've got an active base here. Convicts, proceed with your mission now. Follow orders, Trigger. Taxi to the runway now. Check your altimeter and wait in front of the runway. Control, would you kindly send me up first? Spare eight. Champ, this is the control tower. You're not cleared for takeoff. Obey orders. Go to hell. All aircraft preparing for takeoff. Watch out for spare 80s He's forcing a takeoff. I'll take up command. Any objections? That'll get decided in the skies. <laughs> Too shit. Trigger your call sign as spare 15. Consider it your prisoner number for the air. Commencing deception and interception. Spare 15, the runway's free. You have permission to take off. Go now. My blood's boiling! Toss the chump in solitary once he gets back. If he makes it back, Barry, can you land your ass as grass? Spare 15, take off confirmed. Altitude restriction lifted. Go. So, no missiles again. The FCS is locked. Damn, you're good. Let's make this more interesting. Prisoners use nothing without supervision. Not even a pencil. <laughs> Here comes Harling's murderer. He shot two missiles right between old Harling's eyes. Uh, always in the know, aren't you? <laughs> in this war, intel is a life or death matter. Settle down. Excited to have another murderer with you? Yeah! This is Bandon. Spare 15, I'm handling surveillance. The bombers that attacked the runway are coming back for another round. I know it's just a dummy runway. I just need to make a lot of noise. Make them think there's fighters at the base. Anyone got a smoke? I'll owe you one. If any of you die, just think of it as you and Tony for your crimes. Much appreciated. <laughs> one more thing. Any aircraft leaving the operation area will be shot down. You hear me? Nickel. Right out. Nickel. Number three, this is square one. Numbers we can handle. Proceed with us. Squirrel squadron, get into formation. Spare 15, you're too far away. No time for sightseeing. Look at them. Blowing up a bunch of paper planes. 
The enemy seems to think our Air Force is concentrated on this base. Everything on the ground is fake. Can't the enemy see that? <laughs> Means they're that convincing. Shit! The enemy just hit the control tower! Hey, what's with all the shaking? That's smoking! Woo! Send to the fire team. Not let the enemy get closer. Are you trying to kill me? Shall I order them to shoot down all? Commander. Commander McKinsey. Damn it! Spare squadron, listen up. Shoot down everything carrying bombs. Weapons free. You're clear to engage. Show no mercy. We'll be done by now. Have to rethink the odds. Wanna bet which one of us gets the first kill trigger? This is the penal unit. It counts going forward. I decide when you die. All right, I'm assuming command. All aircraft support me. Who's gonna dance to your line, too? I'll show you all how it's done. Tabloid. 
Spare 15, don't take all the fun away from your comrades. <laughs> Spare 15, what the hell are you doing? Attack! Stand by for your next sortie. I lost a lot of money for that trigger. Don't forget. Spare 15, the runway's free. You have permission to... Did I say you could take down the enemy? Throw anyone who disobeys into solitary. Mihai's granddaughters liked to keep to themselves, mostly. They were well-behaved and possessed a sort of quiet elegance. From time to time, I'd catch myself looking at them, wondering what they were talking about. I'm sure everyone on the base did the same. They were such enthralling creatures. Every night, a crowd would gather around Mihai. They were the men tasked with guarding him in the air. Their jackets all bore the same patch, a relic from a nation that was long gone. Decades ago, during the Age of Expansion, the Kingdom of Erugia absorbed many countries. Theirs was one of them. Mihai asked them, Yet what is a nation? Can we actually see the physical lines that divide one from another? People of my generation can no longer speak the language of our homeland. My grandparents always look sad when they see I have no idea what they're saying to me. Mihai didn't say a word after that. His scarred face betrayed no emotion. He didn't get those scars from flying, though. Mihai was originally from Shalaji. His real name is Mihai Dimitru Margarita Cornelio Leopold Blanca Carol Aeon Ignatius Raphael Maria Nikitas A. Shalaji. When he was young, he was the heir to the Grand Duchy of Shalaji. Then, revolution broke out among his people. Mihai was betrayed by a close friend who pointed a gun at his face and pulled the trigger. The revolution was successful, but the new country that sprang from it was annexed by the expanding kingdom of Arusia. The Arusian royal family allowed Mihai's family to retain their title and noble standing in the new kingdom. 
But Mihai surprised them all by signing up for the draft like an ordinary Erujian citizen. He was then accepted into the Air Force Academy by order of the king. Mihai soon became an ace pilot. When the royal family was ousted and Erujia became a republic, he continued his service for the new regime. Test sites soon flourished. One day, a classmate of Mihai's granddaughter visited. I noticed the rose emblem. She laughed like a princess, and I found out later she was indeed the daughter of Arugia's new ruler. She was the connection to the royal bloodline everyone was looking for, the one to restore the monarchy. This new princess was truly a godsend for the Arugian people. If Mihai's granddaughters were like the moon, she was like the sun, around which everything seemed to orbit. Her face was so expressive, it's no wonder the people of this war-torn country instantly felt at ease when they saw her speeches. They started singing. The pilots of the support plane smiled, even though they wished their nation were independent from hers. Angelic. I wonder how Mihai felt about all of this. It was my job to research his neurological data, after all. I wish I could figure him out. Whatever his feelings were about losing his homeland, he kept hidden, even from me. Your mission is to atone for your crimes by attracting the enemy's attention. First, I want you to head from the base to the desert region of Roca Roja to the northwest. And then second, you will attack the large Arusian base there. We've been unable to verify that base's ability to deal with fighters. You will attack and provoke the enemy into revealing their AA strategy. Get them to fire at you as much as you can. That way, we can confirm where they're firing from. Then it's a case of sending in a regular force to clean them out. For this mission, we prepared a frontline base that can be used for ammo replenishment and aircraft repairs. However, this is not for you guys. Only the regular force has permission to use it. Even if you run out of ammo, don't forget that you're just decoys. You stay out there as targets for the enemy.
Aircraft preparations complete. Stand by at the front. Some welcome. All aircraft, spread out and attack. We're clear to attack, right? I heard the regular forces were gonna clean things up. It's just like before. We blow the shit out of everything. Sharp as attack, aren't you, Spare Aid? Regular forces can reduce losses if you tenderize the base first. If you can't handle that, just fly and be a target. <laughs> Some have air power, so their threat levels vary. Think of the best way to rob them of their ability to respond. Use those empty heads of yours. If you die too fast, you won't even be useful as targets. We're being attacked. Enemy aircraft. Hold the anti air interceptors. Open fire. Affirmative. We'll do it again. Transport truck spotted. Not a threat, but feel free to take them out. Oh, to be. Not doing any kind of specialty. Spare 7. The target. The fire set off a chain reaction. At least stop it from spreading. Target confirmed destroyed. Trigger again. Any regular aircraft that join later needing any repairs or ammo will fly over the return line. However, you guys do not have that luxury. So, what are we supposed to do? Trigger. Rocket it hard. Cut the crap. There's work to do. I'm out. Return to resupply. How are we supposed to work without ammo? I'm heading back. Nice try. This stuff isn't for you guys. Let's be honest here. The regulars like us aren't allowed to resupply. But in your heart, you want us to smash that base. Am I on? You're gonna wish this mission never ended. Looks like bad dogs finally come around. I have two orders for you. Stop wasting ammo, and shut the hell up. Chaffin flares deployed. Locked. Missile. 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 
Spare 15, Fox Nickel. 2. to return and resupply. Spare 15, this is the control tower. Make your land. Spare 15, you are cleared for... Did the jailer know about the shitstorm he was- 
was sending us into? Penal units are just pawns. That lion son Lethal. of a bitch. Don't pretend Lethal. like you deserve any better. Continue Lethal. with the operation. Our attack angles are limited. Spare 15, locked on.
off below you is piles of rubble. Look for more enemies. Let's see if they can't hit you this time. You take care of the service target. Okay. You've hit the enemy base enough. Operation is complete. Head back. The bastards who flew off are going to wish they were never born. You guys get a pass. Damn right. I wouldn't be surprised if we're thrown in solitary too. Hey, who wants to bet who goes into solitary? That's what that gambling nut job would say if he was still here. <laughs> Where's your sense of humor, guys? Your buddy's making a joke. Laugh already. You lost planes, but the mission succeeded. However, some of you crossed the return line for supplies and for repairs. This will result in solitary. Take them. You know, I've received a medal for my ingenuity in finding a use for you cons. But just remember, if you disobey orders, there's a special place in solitary confinement for you. Your so-called right to complain was forfeited the moment you chose to break the law. Okay then, go make yourselves useful. An Ocean Air Force squadron is currently entering Arusian territory for reconnaissance. Due to certain factors, their return route has been changed. The new return route will be through Yinshi Valley, a scenic and rocky karst area. The enemy's radar facilities and anti-aircraft weapons hidden on the mountainside pose a serious threat. Your mission is to destroy them and get our guys out in one piece, even if it puts your own lives in danger. And it is important to remember they will send up interceptors if you're detected. So you will need to choose something useful in a dogfight. The weather won't be on your side, but you're doing this whether you like it or not. Worry about the squadron's return route, not your own. Your mission is to get them back safely, which I think is the perfect punishment for your crimes. Operations complete. You're cleared to taxi.
Air Squadron. This mission needs to be quick. Target radar facilities and AA weaponry. They're set up on a rugged terrain, and there's a lot of cloud cover. You will be near thunderclouds. Man, you guys were born unlucky. Wait, who's the dumbass who came up with this batshit plan? Just obey orders. Air Force Base 444 Squadron, this is Cyclops 1. The Cyclops and Strider Squadrons currently contain seven aircraft. Stand by. We'll be arriving shortly. Understood. Radar's working! We're under attack! Hello. Don't wait for interceptors! Use missiles! We're low on ammunition. It'll be hard to take on hostiles. We'll have to rely on you guys to make it home. Cyclops 1, this is Bandog. We need the job done on time. Bandog? <laughs> cool name. That's work on you, Mr. Gondog. The terrain makes the airstream bumpy. Don't damage those planes. I can't see him. Hey, you gotta fly by your missile. 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 Spare 15, locked. Destruction of target facility is confirmed. Silent, but those SAM sites are still a threat. Eliminate them. All targets destroyed, no complaints here. Caution. Bandits inbound. Here come the UAVs. We might have crossed the line. There they are. Leave this one to our friends. Wish we'd use that hole to get home too. Don't always go perfectly. The drones have jumped on the recon team. Our friends aren't equipped for air to air. They need our cover. All 444 aircraft, get them out of there. Not even one is to go down. Destroy the UAVs. That's impossible. I'm not flying in there to help out some assholes I don't know shit about. As they say in my house, there's a thin line between bravery and stupidity. Someone flew into the thunderclouds! Spare 15 has broken through the thunderclouds. Nice work for the dumbass. We're on to do something. Quit whining and finish them off. Figured UAVs wouldn't like lightning. Let's go. Strider 2, enemy behind you. Shit, this is bad. I wish I had some air-to-air -air missiles. Prioritize recon squadron survival. I repeat, your top priority is to get them out safely, even if you die in the process. Slider 2, we need that missile! Cyclops 2, missile UAV there. splashed. Not on my ass. Thanks, I owe you. Alright, good start. 
Now let's get the remaining six out of there. The lightning short circuited those drones. How do you like that? Cyclops 3, watch your ass! Shit! Roger that. Will do. Soldier, soldier. 
said the enemy had one mean son of a bitch flying for him. Our team had a few Air Force hot dogs, real experienced pilots. But this guy swooped in like a hawk, locked on, and took them all out in the blink of an eye. Reminds me of a story Gramps told me once. He said a little while before he retired from active duty, he saw an enemy fighter wipe out an entire formation right in front of him. It was like seeing how a shark works when it's going after its dinner. This enemy pilot stalked Gramps' pals from below, just like how a shark would. Then one by one, he put the bite on them. Sounds like what happened to our guys today. Kind of surprised so many made it back alive. I bet when they saw what was going on, they broke formation and left their buddies to the shark. 
Hang on. There's three extra planes here. They're foreigners, too. You returned without permission and failed as escorts. So how about you rethink your value while in solitary? Take them away. Well, well, what do you know? Pilots made it back to base alive. Treat them well and feed them plenty. After all, we have to get a favorable report out of them. I've spent enough of my time being the commander of some worthless penal unit. to talk to one of the pilots that escaped back here, so I took it. Apparently, two of our planes took the enemy on alone. They covered the Allies so they could retreat. The hell kind of idiot does a thing like that? The last pilot to land back at the base was that scrawny anarchist dude. He always had this dumb grin on his face. Like he didn't give a damn about whatever he did to get thrown in here with the rest of us. Was he the one who went gung-ho? I bought him a drink later. After the usual small talk, I turned the topic around to the mission. For an anarchist, he struck me as a bit weird. Nothing like what I expected. He talked a mile a minute and kept going on and on about library books. Not encyclopedias, those cheesy adventure novels you read in high school. Nothing against those. I like a good story myself once in a while. But I wasn't here to talk books. Uh, I remember that day well. Amidst the swirling clouds, a fighter squadron was trying to help its allies reach safety. He's pretty foolish, isn't he? I thought so too. Suddenly, a highly skilled enemy fighter squadron appeared and began picking them off at the edges. One by one, they fell right out of the sky. Although, I guess there was nobody around that was even more foolish to go to their aid then. So you simply watch things unfold from a distance. Yeah. I mean, who would have ever thought that I'd just go and follow them straight into the enemy squadron like that? After what felt like decades, I finally got to the info I was looking for. He wasn't the guy. He said he was just following his wingman's lead and managed not to die somehow. The hero on this mission was the new guy. The one that killed Harling. <laughs> How did you feel? I'm still kind of shaken up, actually. But you know, I do feel a certain sense of pride, too. He really is foolish, isn't he? Yep, he sure is. I went to the hangar to have myself a closer look at Trigger's plane. I knew that burnt smell. That's what happens when an engine's been driven to its limit. This pilot was a hot dog. From now on, I was gonna keep my eye on this idiot. From a distance, though. I didn't want to get too tight with someone who was a better pilot than my dad. Even so, I decided to give this guy's plane a little bit of the old Avril magic touch. He needed all the help he could get. Attention! If you disobeyed orders in the previous mission, line up over there. You won't disobey a second time. Do not test my patience. The biggest threat to our forces is the enemy's enormous swarm of drones. In order for our forces to penetrate deep into Arusian territory, we'll need to clear a path. You will destroy the enemy's fuel plant. HQ has found evidence that fuel is being moved intermittently inland from a refinery at the harbor in Artiglio. 
It's likely they're supplying fuel for the various drone bases. Those of you whose food privileges were taken away already know how this goes. We silence the drones by taking their fuel. Enter via the estuary, take out their AA, destroy the fuel points on both sides of the river and their oil tankers. Remember, you're not bona fide military. You're expendable. Stand by at the front. Champ went down crying like a baby. I knew he was all bark and no bite. <laughs> the coward. You don't want to talk, running off with your tail between your legs. I wasn't running away, I was retreating. Well, I can't say I blame you. It was hell out there. Man, I'm not in the mood for this shit today. I'm gonna blow stuff up to let off steam. Target in sight. I see a lot of oil tanks. Hurts, all warships. There's plenty of buildings, too. Destroy everything in sight. I appreciate the simplicity of the operation. But they don't look like military. You think you look anything like military? Fox 2. There's a little way. You as well as truly started. That's what I call fireworks. <laughs> yeah! I've got more bad news. The Megastorm and Nessa 2 that formed a few days ago is approaching our AO. No time to smell the roses then. A fighter pilot needs to fight. Missions like this are too easy. Look at that oil. Just burn up the sea. Another one dropped here. I'm going on my back. Take this. Burn, bitches! Are you guys all nuts? I thought at least one of you was dead. Get that face made stuck at the panel, babe. It's like watching the fireworks display. Burn, baby, burn. Trigger, here's a quietly slugging away. You think you're the only sane one here? The man dog was right. We're no problem in the military. Enough with the holier-than-thou act, tabloid. I am alone in the penal unit. Trigger, you go out here and put an eye to It's all about where you're from. Back on me! Target is annihilated. Anessa 2 entering AO in three minutes. Shit, we're out of time. Three minutes remaining. Right, right. 
any day. Megastorm and Nessa 2 is about to arrive. Right. Bring out the trucks. Make sure their routes are split. Take every drop of fuel you can carry. It looks like some oil tankers loaded with oil got away. HQ saw them on satellite. Burn down everything that turns up. That cheers me up. Why are they popping on and off of radar? Sand clouds. Sand breaks up here and there. That's when radar picks them up. If you detect something, strike fast. Staring at my radar and trolling? This is not my style. Even in sand, you can lock on if you get close enough. Are you sure you can trust that intel? Easy for you to say. Gums. 
Have you forgotten what happens to deserters? I'll send you out to dig up landmine with your bare hands. I'm sticking around. You know why that political offender jackass is still alive, don't you? Trigger? Higher chance of living with him. Allied aircraft down by a UAV. Pipe down and keep your mind on the mission, full band. We gotta get those UAVs. Celebrating, but I don't hear anyone saying all targets have been taken down. Trigger, I need support now. Enough of this trigger bullshit. All aircraft, destroy the tankers. I just leave them to it. Missile launched. Huh? Oh, that explosion. Target down. You can't stick around forever. Find those targets. The weapon systems acting up. I can't fight like this. I'm gonna break off. There he goes, running away. And he's who drew the drones here. <laughs> Say what you want. Have fun with your new friends. Damn it, I've got one on my back. Target detected on radar. Target confirmed near full band. Dig around. The mission was a success. There's nothing else I need to say. Dismissed. So it looks like we're getting attention from above. If any credit is due, it should come to me. Prisoners deserve nothing.
it seems headquarters is starting to view some of you in the penal unit as a valid military force. Or at least that's what the rumors are saying. But that's bullshit. The only reason you're here is to atone for your crimes by carrying out missions. <laughs> well, you sit on your ass and get medals. You, solitary, now. Okay, on to the briefing. In this mission, you're going into Arusian territory. We know the Arusian Forces communications facility to the north in the Waipolo Mountains is linked to the swarm of drones. Your mission is critical. You will destroy the facility and then weaken those drones. As it's important, the enemy won't go down without a fight. The area is watched over by spy satellites. If discovered, expect AA missiles. Unless you have a death wish, you must use the clouds for cover around the sides and base of the mountains. Use the clouds to hide from their satellites, and you just might have a chance to shake off their missiles. If you do find a missile on your tail, head to the clouds and pray. Let the missile kill you or crash into the rocks. That much freedom I will give. Time to get busy, convicts. Proceed with your mission now. The enemy is watching from above. Stay in... ...in or below the clouds to keep hidden. That means no missiles. Even you lot should understand that. Talk about an enclosed space. What's more enclosed than solitary? Commence operation. That's your target radar. Destroy the anti-air weapons around it, too. Enemies are attacking! Enemy aircraft are heading this way! Just drive them away. Chase them upward. Lead them into the missiles. But what if the radar isn't under a cloud? Destroy it and then scurry for cover if you value your life. I thought you'd say that. Destroy radar sites. You're still under satellite observation. Watch out for missiles. Feels like I'm being watched by a pack of band dogs. Their missiles are guided by a combination of the satellite and the radar facility. So if the radar facility is destroyed, their missiles should stop hitting their targets. Are you sure you can trust that intel? Who knows? Only one way to find out. You're best shaking off missiles by going into the clouds. Caution. Missile away. Targeting gun range. Fire. You're in plain view, Spare 15. Get back to the clouds. 
Radar sight confirmed destroyed. However, not all radars have been taken out. The satellite's still in operation. They sure aren't making things easy for us. Damn it, they're making us do something, but just what? It's a dangerous operation, but it's better than running through a minefield blind, I guess. You're so naive, tabloid. What we're doing is exactly like running through a minefield blind. Silence. If you've got time to yap, you're not doing your job right. Got in using a trick any amateur could think of. Picked up a bunch of intel. Full man, that's your second strike. There won't be a third. Target destroyed. Mitchell. Two to go. Mitchell. I got my hands on a password, and after some digging around, I found a bunch of stuff. I'm not sure you understand what you're saying, Spare Six. I'll let you in on it when we're home, Van Dog. In this war, intel is a life or death matter. <sighs> I think you might be right. I almost got hit by AA fire. Cancel alert. Remember that satellite is up there. Locked. Locked. Radar site destroyed. Show the last one the same hospitality. Missile. 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 The enemy is back in a lot of anti-air weaponry. I know. I can't focus on attacking like this. last of the radar sites we needed to destroy. That probably put a stop to their satellite's missile guidance capabilities. Someone fly above the clouds. How about you do it? I like the sound of that. You can deal with the exercise. Wait a minute. Hold it. What's going on, Van Dog? Hold up. This is the Air Force Base 444 Squadron. What is your affiliation? Nobody told me there was this many nearby. Incoming Allied fighters, respond. The regular forces don't want anything to do with the penal base. Hey, they have radar lock. The IFF says they're allies. Missile, whoa, time out. Fire. Fire. Tell me they're barrier Fire. troops. Someone's on me! Is he an enemy? Evade! Ocean fighters do not attack! Shit! These guys aren't allies! Are they spoofing our IFF? Modern IFF connects to our strategic system via satellites. It can't be decoded. What the hell? This is the penal unit. 
I decide when you die. Shit! Spare 15 locked! Projectile incoming. The new groups on radar. Tell us what's happening. Come on! God damn it, not right now. That doesn't sound good. Air contact incoming at high speed. It's too fast to be an aircraft. If it's not an aircraft, what is it? What do we do? What's going on? Five, four, three, two, one. Here it comes. from HQ. Their weapon is codenamed Helios. It's a long-range missile carried by Arsenal Birds. Arsenal Birds? Why are they aiming for us? Sending over the predicted impact zone. It's coming in hot. Damn, you're working quick today, Van Dog. Get too chatty and you'll die. Five, four, three, two, one. How can they fire like that when they've got allies in the airspace? Don't they care about the pilots? Now I finally get my chance to show off.
The mission was a success. There's nothing else I need to say. Dismissed. You know what happens by giving false reports. Anyway, you other pilots should learn from him. I'm getting the hell out of this dump. And when I do, their kill count will make my star shine brighter. Suddenly, we were being treated like a regular unit. We've been ordered to pack everything up and move the base further inland. We even got a transport plane. The funny thing is, no one here remembers I've got a bum leg and, oh, that I'm not a soldier. Take a look at the map. There's an island on the other side of Yuja our Marines landed on. The space elevator's not too far from there. They tell us the airfield's being used as a base to support the elevator. Not sure if I trust that intel. Anyway, the transport plane's gonna drop us there. Without any fighters to cover us. Some genius thought we could commandeer the enemy's jets they left in the hangars, and use those to fight. Y'all aren't real soldiers, they said. Any other day we'd be using you lowlifes to go out and dig up landmines, and prisoners don't get guns. You'll just have to make do with whatever we give you and like it. A phone. They don't let us prisoners near them. But with all the hustle and bustle of moving the base, they forgot to lock this one up. Looks like an antique. I lost my right for a phone call ever since I was arrested and locked up. It's trippy to think that I can just hook it up, dial a number, and talk to someone from my own country. Planning escapes ain't all I'm good at. I'm plenty good at remembering phone numbers, too. A little while later, I headed over to HQ. You must know. We did get a call direct from command. That pipe, what exactly are you doing with it? My grandfather had a lot of friends in the Air Force from his time as a lieutenant. My point? Well, you're going to set out in your own special aircraft. Then you'll send everybody else off in the wrong direction while you head somewhere else. <sighs> All right, fine. But just you and you alone. You're the only one allowed on board. Besides, there's only one seat left. I said, cool. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Attention! I've received a communication from the General Staff Office. It seems your ability to carry out missions has gotten the attention of the higher-ups. All of you have been pardoned. The Ocean Air Force Base 444 Squadron is now officially legit. In celebration, you are to join the operation to take back the base on Tyler Island in southwestern Yuzhia. The battle is underway, and the airport to the south has been reclaimed. However, fighting with the remaining forces in the north is still active. You will all be stationed at the airport. The battle is not letting up. We expect extensive losses to all involved. Still, the fact that we've gained new ground is a blessing. My time as CO of the penal base is over. All command personnel, including myself, are being moved to a base in Far Eastern Yuzhia. However, we will be stopping to refuel in Bulgurderest. It's in Erusian territory, with close ties to Osea. Even if we detour, we will still have to fly through Erusian airspace in the end. And that is where we will need you ex-cons to come in. I've selected a number of you with mission experience to provide support. That's all. Dismissed. Hey, Trigger, wait right there. Though I'm not entirely happy with the arrangement, 
You are going to provide support. The drones might attack again. If they do, protect my aircraft with your life. If the General Staff Office hadn't stepped in and requested you, your ass would have been sent to Tyler Island. You were covered in Harling's blood, yet you still are messing around behind the scenes. You breathe in a way I don't like, and I'll shoot you out of the damn sky. Spare 15, this is the control tower. The runway is clear. You are cleared for takeoff. The base commander's transport craft has taken off. It's flying alongside Spare 2. Well, Trigger, this is where we part ways. I hope we meet again at different squadrons. Spare 15, takeoff confirmed. Spare 15, altitude restriction lifted. on plane left without me. Yeah, I know. I'm heading into hell. Whatever. If the cons here and the dumbass prison guards are going, why shouldn't I? I'm no angel. I mean, my old man died playing hero, and all I do is hate him for it. It ain't gonna be a picnic, that's for sure. Adios, you damn fool. Sites detected. Keep the commander safe. I don't want to deal with the mess. Haha. <laughs> we can sleep in for once. Site detected. Eliminate all threats. Sam confirmed silent. Bandits closing in. Determined hostile. Intercept. The general staff office seems to have the impression you didn't kill Harling, Trigger. Accorded destination. We open your 
your case. Successfully carry out this mission, and it'll give a good impression. Rover 1, hit by a missile. Vandog, get some support in there fast. Tell them I requested it. There's no time. Two aircraft will have to do. Another Zam spotted. This is School 3. Enemy transport and support spotted and confirmed. Sending backup. Cleared to engage. Another Sam. Clean it up. Spare squadron. Sam site's located. Take him out. Missile. Missile. 40 kilometers remain. Missile. Escorts that go down do so Missile. with honorable service. Missile. Of my praise. Missile. The next missile will down your Missile. craft, so watch your tail. Missile. Van Dog, it's up to you to make sure the support stays Missile. in the air. Missile. Enemy destroyed. Continue with escort. Flying as an escort makes me feel like I'm all tied down. Caution. Pull up. Local one has taken damage. Both aircraft stop slacking out there. Right o not let the enemy get closer. Sam site's located. It's inbound. Don't get distracted. Just a little further.
Four Squadron. What is your affiliation? Got a guard dog out here barking? This is your old friend, Cyclops One. Cyclops Squadron? What are you doing here? I was tracking an enemy prototype. I wouldn't be surprised if that dumbass from your side was the one who downed it. This is Base Commander McKinsey. I apologize on behalf of that asshole. He really screwed up. He didn't listen to my order to stand down. I'm certain he'll be punished for taking down the unidentified aircraft. Give me a break. Commander, if you would kindly accompany me to my base, we'll answer any questions you have there. Actually, I'm grateful. Support was unreliable. Respectfully, sir, I believe they got promise. get a warm welcome to our base, but the situation is complicated. That drone is the enemy's latest experimental craft. We wanted to collect data on its capabilities, but that's gone out the window now, hasn't it? To be honest, I didn't think it could be brought down by anything. Oh yeah, your commander has been transferred to a different post. He's probably headed to the front lines where things are hottest. Well, he did stress his achievements. We need every edge we have. 
We're currently seeing where we can use you best. Stand by for further orders. Trigger, count. We've received official confirmation about what we're supposed to do with you. The company commander has made it clear he'd like you both to officially join our squadron. This is an unprecedented move. Seems like you've got some people looking out for you. Still, I think it's because of how you've conducted yourselves. I believe you'll be an asset to us. Okay, it's time for your briefing. For a long time, our counteroffensive has been overpowered by the Erosion Drone's auto-intercept system. If a craft enters their airspace and doesn't respond to their IFF, drones automatically take off and move to intercept their target. However, we've discovered that the intercept system has a blind spot. We've acquired this valuable information by sending our other squadrons on dangerous missions to scout the whole area and initiate combat. Of all the pilots assigned to us, only two managed to survive the mission. If we don't act now, before the enemy can fill in the blind spot, those pilots will have sacrificed themselves for nothing. So, we've been ordered to carry out a long-range strategic strike. Operating separately from the main forces as the long-range strategic strike group, we've been developing a strategy in secret. Cyclops Squadron and Strider Squadron will sortie deep into the Erosion territory and will be carrying out specialized, long-range attack strategies. You will carve your way through the territory from the north to the capital of Barbani, attacking important targets along the way. The first operation will involve striking the enemy's main naval force, the Njord Fleet, which is gathered in northern Yuzhou. We've known for some time that there's a large supply base utilized by the enemy fleet in the waters around Snyder's Top. At present, the enemy fleet is concentrated there. Naturally, they intend to attack eastern Yuzhou, where the Ostian forces are stationed. If we can surprise the enemy with a long-range attack, we could potentially do devastating damage to them. Still, it's highly likely that their advanced fleet are prepared and have started to move. So combat with the enemy fleet is probably unavoidable. We've verified the existence of a large supply base in the sea, as well as a medium-sized one in a valley by an estuary. It's a wide operation area, and there are a number of places you can expect large-scale combat, so we've set up a return line for replenishing supplies. Use it proactively. Anytime you feel the need to stock up on ammo or make repairs to your craft, it's there. While aircraft and ammo can be replaced, the lives of our pilots cannot. We don't want any casualties out there. Remember that. The counterattack has begun. Brace yourselves.
Strider Squadron, aircraft prep complete. Sortie ASAP. Strider 1, you will be leading Strider Squadron. Count, you'll be Cyclops 2. You'll be under Cyclops 1. Sorry, but I'm gonna eat while I work. My judgment goes fuzzy when I'm too hungry. How can you talk about food? Trigger, how come you're number one and I'm stuck as number two? Oh well, I guess I can let it slide for now. And we're just supposed to follow you? I heard you're spectacular, Captain. At least with your last squadron. I don't want you slowing us down out there. Half of us are resupplying. We need We're time. We're near the valley platform. Damn it! They caught us getting ready to deploy. Hurry it up! Missile. Strider 3, engaging. Missile. Cyclops 3, Missile. engaging. Cyclops 4, engaging. Target destroyed! supposed to smash up that whole thing? That'd be a tall order. Just destroy the boats, aircraft, and AA weaponry. Nah, let's do what the chicks say. Confirmed. It is between those bombs and that bridge is well done. Were we serving a 
sandwich? I'm happy to eat both. Whatever you say, man.
special delivery. Missile. Missile. Enemy is locked on. Break it. Hostile behind me. Strider 1, missile launched. Break, man! 
Cash frozen over. 30 seconds remaining. Missile. Your plane will ice up if you stay in there too long. Strider 3, watch your tail. Strider 1, enemy is locked on. Bandit acquired. Firing. Missile. I've been spiked. Missile. Missile. Bonus 6. Missile. Breaking out of luck. One of the pilots who's been up against the demon in that experimental squadron. Chased him off solo, too, since support ran off. I was there myself. Wouldn't be here if it weren't for Trigger. You see what I'm getting at? Yeah, well, I wish I'd been there, too. If you were one of those escorts that flew off, you should watch your back. Attention all aircraft. Operation complete. The enemy won't recover from this one. You did great out there. I think tonight's the night we finally opened that bottle. I think I understand the new boss's style. Our other newcomer is a unique character. <sighs> the old squad was bad, and I guess it's no different here. I could really perform. If only I had some partners I could trust. No need to worry. I got your back. Relax and do your thing. Give me a break. Sorry, but I'm gonna eat while I work. The mission was a success. You did more to hobble the enemy's sea power than we first expected. Outstanding work. This should free up our allies who have been bogged down on the East Coast. In addition, this success allows us to finally move on and initiate the operation to shoot down the Arsenal Bird. We have a long road ahead of us. Get some rest while you can. Our counteroffensive has changed the course of the war. However, the western part of the continent and the area around the space elevator still remain under erosion control. As you all know, this is because they have those damn arsenal birds controlling the skies around the lighthouse. So, we're going to use Stonehenge for a long-range attack against the arsenal bird. In addition to helping to destroy the asteroid, Stonehenge was also utilized by the Erusian forces as a weapon in the Continental War. However, the majority of the artillery is out of action after an air raid by the Independent State Allied Forces. When that happened, the main base was being repaired from the damage caused by the asteroid, so it managed to escape the bombardment. The Ocean Army continued the repairs in secret and managed to reactivate its base systems. Once preparations are complete, it will be able to fire again. However, the officer in charge has yet to confirm whether it can be fired more than once. In other words, it is looking like we may have only one chance to be able to bring down one of those invulnerable arsenal birds. We're going all in on this one plan. The Erusian forces have detected our movements and are marching on Stonehenge. The arsenal bird is closing in, but if our operation goes as planned, we should be able to shoot it down before it reaches the operation area. We've set up strong points we call Menhirs around Stonehenge. Provide them with air support while keeping air superiority. Our mission is to protect Stonehenge until it can shoot down that monster bird. If we can shoot down even just one arsenal bird, it will significantly reduce the scale of the enemy's air defense network. Stonehenge is our only way of bringing down an arsenal bird. Missing is a luxury we cannot afford.
Clear squadron, proceed to runway. Sortie ASAP. All defensive and air support teams, in order to get up and running, what I need most from you is time. As long as you can provide me that, my program will bring down the arsenal bird. That was Major Deanna McConey. I'm Warrant Officer Lehman, a specialist. We're now commencing the operation to destroy the arsenal bird. It's gonna be a long fight. Don't waste any ammo. So that's Stonehenge, huh? It's bigger than I imagined. Uglier, too. That mess of cables. They're using generator trucks to run it. Are we sure that thing's even gonna fire? Seriously, I mean, how old is it? If it doesn't, then our luck is run dry. I'd get praying if I were you. Well, if it works, it'll bring down even an arsenal bird. Big F. And it'd have to hit. Yet. Let's take out the enemy while our friends are still on their feet. Stall warning. Uh -huh. 
countdown. We've lost the target. They're starting to shut down. Gone? What? The stupid thing is flying in the open. The survey data isn't updating. No response from our spotter. Survey vehicle down. Those vehicles were Stonehenge's eyes. Without those, I'm sorry. Don't give up yet, Major. We still have sensors. All right. The oldest sensors in the book. What are you scheming? They're too unreliable. Not bad. That's something. Impossible. We're running circuit. We can't do any more. Half the battery way. containers are We can't carry out our mission. Come on, damn it! Attention, all personnel! We have a change in the mission. We will now be using direct fire to shoot down the arsenal bird. Listen, attack the central repellers. If you can destroy them, the arsenal bird will slow down. Strider 1, Cyclops 1, air up and attack that propeller. Everyone else, defend Stonehenge from the UAVs. Missile. Missile. Wilco. Missile. you take the lead. Missile. He's ready against APS. I'm going. The propellers are too much for Trigger alone. Oh, you damn glory hound. Do your friggin' job. appetite. But enough about that. Get some rest now before the counterattack. Yeah, we got our hands dirty for nothing. The guys were babbling about a three-line marking. Look into that for me. All the 
offensive and air support. The mission succeeded, but at a great cost. This victory marks a strategic turning point. The enemy has only one arsenal bird left, and the defensive grid around the space elevator has been decimated. We can expect a counteroffensive by Ocean forces everywhere. I was born downtown in our capital. When I recall my homeland, my thoughts are filled with the sights and sounds of the city. But home means something different to each and every one of us. Therefore, I've decided to visit every place where our citizens call home. The Kingdom of Arugia is a land of diversity. Each region has its own unique and special culture. The destruction of one of their arsenal birds has significantly reduced the scale of Arusha's air defense network. Ocean forces have moved into the areas where we gained air superiority and freed over half of the Yuzhin continent. However, Arusha is feeling the pressure and is reacting by attempting to activate the ballistic missile base in the suburbs of Sierra Plata. For the past 72 hours, they've put the resources and people into action and have already entered the final stages of a launch. The missile silo is deep underground. To destroy it, we'll need a bomber to drop a huge deep penetration bomb in a precise place. Unfortunately, that airspace is thick with clouds at the moment, so it'll be difficult for a bomber to hit the target accurately. Normally, we'd wait for the weather to clear, but with the situation being what it is, we don't have that option. So. We will be the bomber's eyes and find the missile silo. You'll all be equipped with targeting pods instead of special weapons. We need you to fly at low altitude, visually identify which silo they're activating, then acquire it with your targeting pod. Once you press the firing switch, the bombers will drop their payload based on the location data provided by the targeting pod. You will need to keep the silo in the center of your sight until the bomb hits its target, or else it will miss entirely. It takes a high level of airmanship to properly guide these bombs to their targets while flying in place. Naturally, we assume the enemy has positioned anti-air artillery and aircraft in the area of operations, so stay alert. Additionally, we suffered human and material losses in the last battle, so Cyclops Squadron will sit this one out. Trigger, it's up to you to make this work with just Strider Squadron. Strider Squadron, sortie ASAP. Arusia only has five IRBM silos in total. Therefore, the enemy's made a number of fake silos to try and throw our bombers off the scent. Did you say fake? They're painted to look at the real thing from the sky. You can't tell the difference. It's the wing of that LRSSG that brought down that arsenal bird. We've got the bomb. You do the terminal guidance. In order to use the targeting pods, you'll need to change weapons first. Try to align the missile silo with the circle in the center of your HUD. When you're lined up, hit the firing switch and the bomb will drop. You're gonna need to keep the silo aligned until the bomb hits. The enemy set up anti-air weapons at multiple locations. We need to work together to take them down. Keep the targeting pod trained on that silo until the payload is delivered. Hit, but it was off the mark. Let's give him another. The warhead should be exposed. Standard weaponry will suffice. Take your pick. Dropping an 
Another bunker buster will take some time. Aim carefully. Run one, we have the coordinate. Fire the bunker buster. Destruction of first missile silo confirmed. The IRBM is aimed at the Ocean Garrison. Soldiers' lives are at stake. We have no time. They completely lost it. You can bet on it. Let's end this madness. That's a swing and a miss. It'd be a lot easier to find the silo. That was nice. I'm shaking off enemy lock! Missile away. Trigger and destroy the target. Target confirmed. Dropping the bomb now. Missile silo is damaged. We need another hit. Nice of this was launched from the silos off the chart. Let's do this. Trigger. The bomb has been dropped. The bomb was off its mark. The target is still standing. Strider to account. Missile. A formation okay. changes every mission. I'm sure he has a reason for it. I'll believe that when I see it. I'm just glad he won't be there to chew my air off. Missile silo destroyed. That makes two. No launch sites yet. Missile. Fox two, Fox two. Missile. They're Missile. after you, Strider one. Missile. Picking up an enemy squadron. It must be the reinforcements they called in. They don't appear to be going after our bomber. Take them out if they interfere with our mission. We're in seven, locked on target. Missile. 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 Strider 1, missile! Missile. Bunker buster away. Missile. Enemy behind you! Missile. The bomb. There's nothing but a big cloud of the target. The silo must have been a decoy. Missile.
this dam. Not from the silos? They certainly hit it well. We still have a chance. Shoot it down before it reaches critical altitude. We have successfully prevented an enemy ballistic missile attack. Strider Squadron, you did very well without your unit commander. We are now preparing for the final stage of our long-range operation, seizing the capital. of an arsenal bird followed by the destruction of their ballistic missile base, Yerusha is running out of ways to counter. This is a great opportunity for the Ocean Army to bolster our power to eventually take down the Yerushan capital of Farbanti. The special long-range strategy is entering its final phase. Our objective is to attack and capture the Yerushan Air Force Base in Cape Rainey in northern Yerushan. This important base is at the forefront of our strategy to establish control of Farbanti. Under the cover of night, our plan is that all squadrons will invade from the valley to the south and mount an air assault on the area. The enemy's observation field has eyes on the skies above the valley, so your altitude will need to be restricted. If you go over a certain altitude, the enemy could spot you, ending the mission in failure. Keep that in mind. Once you arrive, you are to take out the enemy's air defense forces as soon as possible and prepare for the support squadrons. When the air defense forces are neutralized, the helicopter squadron should arrive carrying Marines. The plan is to take control of the base. 
Getting through the valley is only half the job. Strider Squadron, aircraft prep complete. You're cleared to taxi. Beginning nighttime aerial... Strider 1, you have passed through waypoint 1. No weapons until you reach the enemy base. All aircraft, reduce altitude. We have altitude restrictions from here on out. Altitude below 600 meters. Good. Maintain your current course. Searchlight up ahead. Watch for it. Stay out of their sight. Strider, pass this board. Our current ET matches yours. We'll catch them on guard. Can we secure the helm seat quickly? We'll get you down safe. I'm worried you're short on men. Everyone here has already signed their wills. That ain't funny. Understood. Strider 1, you've passed through waypoint 2. The valley's about to get narrower. Be careful. Caution. Pull up. Caution. Pull up. Caution. Pull up. Caution. When can we take on the final mission? Caution. I'm starting to get tired of all this. This is the last step, Count. We'll take the enemy base Caution. and use it as a bridgehead. Watch yourselves out there. We're going to need all of you in Farbanti. Without Wiseman here, everybody wants to give orders like they're the company commander himself. And the best thing about Strider Squadron is that our leader keeps his mouth shut. Watch your speed. You've passed waypoint three. You're coming up on the base, imposing radio silence. We won't be able to talk again until you're over the base. Continue to keep an eye on your altitude. There are plenty of dark spots that can sneak up on you.
sights. Major 
instructions. Glad the pizza was on time. Whew. Roger that, Basilisk One. Mission accomplished. All prisoners of war will be treated in accordance with international law. We've even brought pizza. Looks like they can shred those wells. I'm already getting an earful from the men over the needless paperwork. <laughs> no joke. <laughs> okay, go ahead and begin your approach. We'll do the flight control. Roger that. Strider 1, this is Basilisk. The runway is clear. You have permission to land. The party is on as soon as you get here. Reduce your speed. 3,000 meters to the runway. Turn right. 1,500 meters to the runway. Lower your nose. You're too high. You're past the guidance limit. Make a visual landing. Ride on the money, Strider 1. Strider 1 has landed. Let's go and greet him. Excellent work on the night raid. Submarines have arrived from the Ocean mainland and are refueling. This base will serve as a frontline platform for our mission to take Farbanti. We're almost at the end of this operation. Mihai's second sortie was designed to calculate how his physiology changed under the stress of combat. My job was to compare his performance as a pilot now to when he was younger and understand how his skills evolved. To tell you the truth, I'm not sure I wanted to know the answers anymore. For a man his age, Mihai's body was unbelievably resilient, remarkably flexible. His reflexes were as sharp as they ever were. Still, after all those years of flying in the outer layers of the atmosphere, even someone as strong as Mihai wasn't immune to the effects of the strain. The human body is fragile. It was not meant to handle the excessive amounts of radiation that constantly bombarded the stratosphere. For Mihai's second sortie, we used a flight suit that was still untested. He seemed fine on takeoff, but by the time he landed back at the base, he was clearly a mess. He got caught in a surprise dogfight with an especially stubborn enemy. It took a while for Mihai to bring him down. Suspend mission. The suit was ineffective. According to the data, it wouldn't let him fly to his full potential. A new flight suit was made to my exact specifications. When it finally arrived, Mihai's granddaughters glared at me with their disapproval. They blamed me for the pain their grandfather had to keep enduring. But Mihai remained stoic. He wasn't the type of man who cared about anything that happened here on the ground. I wasn't worried about it. I was confident the new suit would protect him thoroughly so that he could maneuver his plane any way he wanted. The moment he took off in his new flight suit, I realized what I had failed to before. Right after takeoff, as the wheels retracted, the plane suddenly arced up. It accelerated so quickly. I had never seen a plane move like that before. Mihai hit the high G's multiple times before disappearing into the blue. The support team couldn't even keep up. And then I knew. I understood why he never seemed to care about restoring his stolen country back to its former glory. 
and why he didn't seem to care about anything that happened here on the ground. Of course, Mihai's kingdom was the sky. The operation to capture Arusha's capital, Farbanti, is beginning. This is the culmination of our work. We need to capture the Erosian Forces' general headquarters in the south of Farbanti and end this war. The plan is for ground troops to attack Farbanti from both the east and north, and a task fleet will attack from the southwest. We will secure air superiority over the capital while providing air support for our allies on the ground and in the water as required. By all accounts, we expect this to be an intense, full-scale battle across land, sea, and air. Should you need to replenish your ammunition or make necessary repairs to your craft, a return line has been set up in the north. During this operation, we will also be tasked with having to destroy the communications satellites that Neruja hacked. If we take down the information communication system that we believe they have control over, it should plunge Arusha into chaos. Once the capital falls, the Arusian military will be isolated and thrown into chaos, making it easier for us to end the war. However, that can't happen until after the capital falls, so you guys are the stars of this battle. Arusha will fight like a tiger, but we cannot lose. We must seize the capital and end this war. Strider Squadron, proceed to runway. Sortie ASAP. Our troops have engaged at Farbati Reconstruction Park, Silver Bridge, and the submerged area. We need you to help our boys in those three locations. This will end the war. It's time. Commence the operation. Our friends are waiting. Lately, as your company commander, I felt some of you young bucks coming after my championship belt. You're really putting the pressure on me. So I think I'm gonna go out there and run up the score. Just to show you guys how it's done. I trust I can count on all you to keep up. Let's get out there, take care of business, and come back in one piece. Strider 1, the turn line is to the north. Head that way if you need to refuel. Good luck, everyone. Count is back in the saddle of Cyclops, too. It's good to be flying with you, you know, Shit. No, that's real funny. It's launched. Mike, bring it away. I'm on my target's tail. I took some damage. Not connect. 
attacked. Damn it. 
to assist other units. Thanks, LRS. We'll take it from here. Fighter coming back around! 
a while. The friendlies are suffering heavy damage. Box two! Box two! Locked on. Enemy is locked on. Break away.
This is a peacekeeping force forward base near Erusian territory. Other Allied aircraft have probably been forced to make emergency landings at other airfields. We don't know much. The mission to capture the capital is nearly complete, but we unfortunately have no intel. The enemy communication satellites are down, and we have confirmed the deaths of several Erusian leaders. But our enemy was smart. They had a similar plan. Our own communication systems were destroyed at approximately the same time. We have no idea when or if they'll come back online. Stand by for further details. As far as the chaos we find ourselves in these days, it's difficult to say which side pulled the trigger first. Arugia deployed an automatic intercept system with drones. Osea implemented long-range attacks to bypass them, so Arugia decided to sabotage Osea's communications and navigation technology. Arugia couldn't launch a satellite themselves, but they were still able to hack the software of the Osean transmission and navigation systems. Before Osea even noticed, half of their satellites were hijacked. That's when things got ugly. In an attempt to knock out each other's capabilities, both forces launched fighters loaded with anti-satellite missiles at the same time. Only military satellites were targeted. However, their destruction created a debris field in orbit which wiped out scores of other satellites, both private and government owned. What kept the world relatively sane up to that point had been free-flowing data and information. But now, those were gone. All that remained was chaos and confusion. Government and civilian broadcasts and transmissions were cut off. The flow of information had ceased. Forces on both sides of the conflict now found themselves unable to communicate with their superiors. Many of the smaller countries annexed by Arugia and yearning for their independence seized the opportunity and started their own uprisings. As for why some of Osea's military decided to break off from the main force and continue on their own, I have no idea. Perhaps there was some sort of dispute over the chain of command. The continent that had once seen wars that were only fought between Osea and Rugia was now full of numerous conflicts between rival leaders vying for power. Insurgencies were everywhere. I even heard a rumor that a group of Osean convicts had rebelled. Rumors. 
It never ceased to amaze me that even at a crazy time like this, something as trivial as a rumor could find its way here. Communications from corporate were cut off. Apparently, the entire computer network was down. It was a wise decision to make our drones autonomous with AI instead of being radio controlled. Wise and forward thinking. Even with their GPS offline, they can still use their sensors to navigate as long as they're working properly. I'm sure the drones are still working perfectly, following their mission orders to the letter. I wish I could upload Mihai's new data to them, but without a connection, I can't upload the software to the active drones. The new ones we're making, though, there should still be enough time to upgrade those before they're activated. I'll be taking the data I've acquired away from the front lines now. Oh, and I'll be taking the girls too. I told my assistant Masa it was time to get Mihai's granddaughters ready to leave here. She's not much older than the girls, but she has a way about her, and I'm sure she won't have any trouble with them. I saw a plane flying off in the distance. I imagine it was looking for a safer place. The plane had a rose emblem on it. Perusia's communication networks have been down since their satellites were destroyed. Unfortunately, we are experiencing trouble too. All of Yuzia has been affected, and we don't know when things will be back up and running. We're not even sure if this is Yuzia's doing. Still, we will follow the strategy that was originally planned, and move on to the next operation after liberating Farbanti. Let's get to it! Since the war began, we've been receiving communications in secret from an officer in the Erusian army. With the capital under our control, Erusia's radical element is losing support quickly, affecting the balance of power. HQ is thinking of using the military officer as a way to gain leverage to settle peace negotiations. The officer is currently hiding in the outskirts of Anchorhead Bay, having joined up with support dispatch from the Ocean Army. The plan is that they'll take a standard vehicle to a rendezvous point at a harbor in the east part of the city, where a helicopter will be waiting. I would like the new Strider Squadron to provide escort for the officer. Cyclops will remain at the base on standby to serve as defense. With the communication network currently down in the capital, I very much doubt Arusia will be able to mount a regimented counterattack. However, it is likely that Arusia's intelligence department and the remaining forces who are aware of the officer's movements will interfere. Keep a close eye on the officer and make sure he stays safe. Our victory in Farbanti has given us a golden opportunity to finally end this war. Be safe out there. Take note that our satellite-based IFF has become unreliable following the recent communications failure. As such, target ID will be done by processing the images from the infrared cameras on your aircraft. Objects will initially appear as unknown on your HUDs, but will be ID'd once you close in on them for a set period of time. Strider Squadron, you're cleared to taxi. To the unidentified Ocean craft, this is Captain Carl of the Ocean Army. What are you here for the escort? You're not the squadron I was expecting. Are you really friendlies? Over. This is Longcaster. Airborne warning and control system for the Ocean Long Range Strategic Strike Group. Captain Carl, they're on our side. And those two pilots we've heard about must be here too. Okay, I hope you're right. Longcaster, are all of these really unknowns? It's a state of civil war. The Erosian army is fighting itself. There's no guarantee the Oceans won't shoot us in this confusion. We'll image process the unknowns caught in your camps to identify friend or foe. 
unprocessedly faster if you get a close-up well-centered image. Meanwhile, we just run if they shoot us, right? Affirmative. Always identify your target before you fire.
I'm sure the boys listening upstairs will record it. The open declaration of war, expanding the front lines, was all the work of some young Erosian officers. They were referred to as the Radicals, but there was an unseen force guiding them. It was technology they borrowed from the Belkins. When they actually went to war, the performance of the attack drones exceeded their wildest dreams. And they were incredibly clean, which got public opinion and the opportunists within the military on their side. They even manipulated the Princess. The Belkin technology advanced UAV research within the Erosion Flight Test Center by at least 10 years. They used the flight data from a former ace pilot to create drone AI, but... To us, it's no different than magic or alchemy. Airplanes are meant to be flown by human beings. Those of you listening in, am I wrong? We're heading towards Gruder Park. Rendezvous point is a helipad on this man-made island. We'll ditch the car and take the helicopter from there. Oh, 
Someone's overseeing. Do not attack before target identification is complete. Responsible for leading the 
Helicopters flying safely outside Anchorhead Bay. All aircraft, RTB, mission complete. All hostiles, huh? <laughs> General, the Ocean aircraft is here to pick us up. The approaching Ocean aircraft. Losing his army? The Elaborate. They stole our sealed orders. It should be a piece of cake. Are you sent by the general staff? No, we want you to send someone! To respond to the attack on the base, Cyclops has scrambled after being on standby. We'll head up too once our planes are ready. Oh, and Labarth is dead. What did you say? Apparently, he was shot down by another Ocean aircraft after he left the area of operations. I mean, I know it was chaos, but still. At any rate, the sealed order operation has come to a close. We have no idea about a plan for going forward. All we can do for now is watch our own backs. What's up with the commander? He's staying in his room. He's still alive, since we can hear him crying. The island we went to was supposed to have been secured by the ground forces. They hadn't gotten a handle on things by the time we got there. So now we were stuck in the middle of a half-assed campaign. My job was to get the planes ready for combat making repairs and handing them over to our troop of cons. Thing is, the enemy still had the hangars. The comms were still down, so none of us knew what the hell was going on. The last transmission I heard before everything went to shit was that some prisoners from an Ocean military penal unit rioted and managed to escape. They stole some jets and now they were flying around, taking out their former allies left and right. I wonder if any units like ours were out here, creeping around. Hearing the Ocean jets firing at each other overhead chipped away at morale. Since the radio was out, it was quiet. I liked it better that way. All I heard was the gunfire. Here we were, walking around carrying rifles. We were pilots, damn it. Friendly fire will probably kill us. You know things are desperate when the guards that used to lock us into solitary are now telling us it's better we all stick together. I guess they think our odds of surviving this war are better that way. After walking for miles across the battlefield, we came across the wreckage of a plane. Passenger, not military. I knew that rose. It was an erosion liaison plane. The guard's dogs smelled something and took off. They led us to a cliff. 
in the bodies. Today, I lost everything. When Osea attacked our capital, my father, a man who was never really suited to being the king, was killed. I was to be flown out of the war zone to safety, but the plane was shot down by rebels. The entire crew was killed in the crash. Soldiers appeared and one shot at me. My dog went after him and I shot him to pieces. He was my best friend. After all those speeches I gave about working together for peace, I thought everyone felt the same as I did. <gasps> I'm sure the soldier who shot at me knew I was the princess of Arugia. He was Arugian too. More soldiers have come. Now, there is no one left to protect me. I am so numb, I cannot move. I watch as one of their dogs approaches and sniffs mournfully at my dead friend. I wonder if it grieves for him as much as I do. I can barely think. I feel weaker by the minute. I don't know who these soldiers are with, but I managed to take a sip of the water they gave me. How long have you been here? Somehow, I muster the courage to answer the woman's question. I tell her I've been there three days. They gather around me with grim looks on their faces. What would they do if they knew I was the Erosion Princess? After searching the cockpit of the plane, the woman who spoke to me before came back to me. This is an air-to-ground tactical radio. It still works! I noticed she walked with a limp. She knelt down next to me and asked her companions to give me some food. And then, very softly, she said, You see, I used to listen to your broadcasts, your royal highness. Just what did you see here? Okay, enough talk. Your opinions have all been taken into consideration. Beyond the seizure of Forbanti, which is important, and supporting the Erusian officer, at this point, I just don't know what our strategy is, or what our mission will be. Radio communication is still patchy for both the military and civilians, so we're getting zip from Mission Command about our orders. Still, with countless Erusian forces in the area, it's too dangerous for us to stay around here waiting for a miracle. Now, regarding Count's suggestion to think about self-defense, uh... I think we should make a break for Tyler Island. It was a large Ocean base before the start of the war. Count says his previous squadron took part in an operation to seize control of the island. It has the only base that will get us to the space elevator without refueling. It's also a transport facility for supply ships that provide drones and ammo for arsenal birds. For the Ocean forces that are looking to reclaim the space elevator, those are two great reasons in its favor. If everything went according to plan, the base may already be in allied hands when we get there. Though based on what Count told me about the island operation, it won't be easy to seize control. If the ground troops have managed to open the bridgehead, the transport route to Osea for supply ships should be available. So much at stake, I can't imagine Arusia just giving it up without a fight. Things could really have gone bad. Even if there are enemies left, they should be pretty easy to suppress. I just want to go home, man. Me too. With that look on your face, Trigger, I know exactly what you want to do. If Trigger's ready to kick ass, then so am I. Damn straight. We're with you, Trigger. It's decided, then. Let's get all the aircraft and haul ass to Tyler Island. Although we can avoid the Arsenal Bird's anti-air network, there's still remnants from the Erusion forces. I want to get to the island without getting into any unnecessary combat. Pick a fast craft and fix it how you want. Pack for a long trip, but remember, 
If you drag your ass, you'll get left behind. Strider Squadron, sortie ASAP. This is Tango 2-3, pursued by multiple tanks and APCs. They'll all go down if we don't pull back the landing craft. And what? Abandoned Tango 2-3? Something's not right. Tango 2-3, we don't have the firepower to assist you. You're on your own. Please, we need help! Wagtail is on the Ocean landing ship. What's going on? What did you say? Multiple bogeys inbound. Damn it. Prepare for anti-air combat. This is the AWACS Longcaster. The aircraft in your area belong to the LRSSG. Now light aircraft. A retreating vehicle is taking fire. Requesting assistance. Roger. Got a positive ID. Fox 2. Update us on Tyler Island. There are two good Our forces are scattered and on the run. They're on the run? We were waiting for retreating units here to carry them out to the Our air support is here. Do me a favor, Longcaster. Many of our allies are cut off. We need support and an escape route. Understood. We'll do what we can. Let's help retreating Ocean forces. Take out any hostiles in their area. Mickle. Don't engage till targets Mickle. are ID'd. Mickle. The boots on the ground don't need Mickle. more people shooting at them. Thanks. It's absolute chaos out there. The erosions are even starting to fight Mickle. amongst themselves. Mickle. Well, Mickle. now we know what's going on, but Mickle. shit. Mickle. I count 12 dead bodies. Move them away from the mass driver. 
upper middle class. The spaceport's nearby, so they could be researchers and their family. Most likely, they were involved with Delta. You're erosion. Jesus, they're firing at each other. Is this the norm around here? It's all crazy people. Our guys even took out the enemy's air support. What do we do now? Send in the tank! Allied retreat looks good. We are in the middle of a mission to take back the mesh driver. Flight in the mission depot is highly combustible. Ambush, stay calm. Reform the race. It's fine if we take a little damage. We need to finish this fight now. Get in the landing craft. Many thanks, Longcaster. We didn't have to leave our boys to die. Understood. Warning, enemy has a beat on you. Strider 1, it's launched. Get the wounded out of here, hurry! If you let them through, we're as good as dead! Star warning. Star warning. Search every nook of the island. We're not leaving anyone behind. Give me enemy position! Speak up! The artillery fire has a number on my hearing! Can you hear us? We're taking fire from multiple enemy tanks! An explosion at night! Continue the countdown. Enemy's not stupid. We're after the supply ship. Do the countdown! Taking fire from a Russian aircraft! Trigger! That was an ally. Identify, then attack. The hell? You're killing your own men. Missile. Missile. There's still one arsenal bird left. Trigger is the kind of a bomb that Arusia will have a fighting chance. Use cameras to track the supply ships. Don't fight with your backs to the supply ship. If it's hit, we're done for. Warning, enemy has a beat on you. Thanks, but will we make it in time? A landing ship is waiting for you. Right, we leave the wounded. This will guarantee us the one way ticket to hell. Not sure we're there already. Missile. It's the Ocean military. Missile. Don't they know they're on the same side? We'll be firing at each other. This is AWACS Longcaster. We're uploading the latest ID data. Check your TAC terminal. Hold your fire! I have The info is from an allied AWACS. Hold your fire! Roger. Hold your fire. You guys got out alive. You have time to figure it out. You're almost out of special weaponry. Blackout for a beat. Tank fire for the wrong on fumes and low on ammo. Wait. Multiple bogeys from the east. Their timing tells me they're not here to bring good news. We need to ID the bogeys. Take them down if they're hostile. Understood. Struggle 1, Fox 2. Bogeys inbound. Escort fighters, we're counting on you. Should we fire? Even if we're not fired upon? Squadron. You're near an armada of bogeys. Identify them. Identification complete. It's Erujian bombers and their escorts. Count's prophecy has come true. Take out all bombers, or they'll flatten our allies. Plenty of civilian casualties as well. Precision bombing is impossible in these conditions. Maybe they know they can't. We're gonna drop them all. Ground numbered and we'll be surrounded. Missile. 
They may be loaded with new weaponry that we don't even know about. We have no choice but to take down the supply ships before they can get within the Arsenal Birds air defense network. You've got to hurry or you're not going to make it. Three minutes to the enemy's air defense network. All aircraft, remain on high alert. We got bandits in coming on radar. You're going to have to forget about them for now. Focus on destroying that supply ship first. We're sitting ducks like this. Let the supply ship get too far away, we'll never be able to catch it. So they're trying to feed that giant monster of a bird. We can't let them complete their mission. seconds to the enemy's air defense network. Don't lose them! Good. Take a seat. Everyone's here. All right. Good work in sinking the supply ships. Not to mention saving the refugees. However, we're in no position to start celebrating. Even the commander here is starting to fray from the stress. Can't say I blame him. Now, Tyler Island is in a state of complete anarchy. This base isn't safe either. Faces you see around you are the only friends we've got. Take a good look. We found a boat, then sailed away from the island. We had to. We didn't belong there. The new guy's name was George. I noticed when the anarchist said his name, he said it with a thick Belkan accent. How did you know that he was from Belka? Well, both my parents were from Belka, so... You never told me that. They say that Belkans are known for their conspiracies. <laughs> That's just a stereotype. Now, I simply stated my honest opinion and was thrown in jail for it. The princess sat there looking miserable. That was a dumbass stunt she pulled back there. 
but it got us on this boat. Take a look at that. This ship is heading for a single rope that's hanging down from the sky. Do you know how far the end of that rope reaches? Outer space. No. It is a direct connection to the very potential of mankind itself. Or at least it was until war erupted. It's my strong belief that... The rope might be connected to a very distant, faraway source of... Of great conflict and strife. Even long before the war, the whole world started falling apart once Harling began trying to build it. I often wonder... What was going through Harling's mind when, when he was trying to destroy the very thing that so many people were sacrificed in order to create? Sacrificed? What do you mean? Have you seen all of those countless old space shuttles on Tyler Island that are no longer in use? Yeah. <laughs> I always thought of them as a good source of scrap. They're an obsolete technology that was abandoned during the construction of the space elevator. Which would mean that if the space elevator was destroyed, it would be that much harder for mankind to reach the stars. Until we find another way. But even then, Harling still went ahead and tried to destroy it. At the cost of his own life. That's not the way I heard it. What I heard was that he sacrificed himself to protect the tower from an incoming missile. Oh, I was told he tried to fly his ship into the tower in order to destroy it. I wonder which story is true, your royal highness. I don't know. Looking at it objectively, it's reasonable to believe that Harling had both options before him. When it comes to which one you think he took, I guess it's like a mirror. Yes, it is. It's like a mirror looking into your own soul, based on whichever choice you believe it was. At the moment, though, I can only see darkness. I think... I think that thing should be destroyed. It's time for the briefing. Although, since we don't have any contact with HQ, not like this is an official mission. Anyway, it looks like the seizure of Tyler Island and the relief from Osea have been postponed. In the meantime, we just have to do what we can to survive. Since losing its capital city of Ferbanti, Eurusian forces have separated into smaller, autonomous factions. It looks like Eurusia's largest force and leading faction will pass through the area around this base. The space elevator is significant to them, so they're probably heading there. Should we intercept? Why? I doubt they're gonna start a fight now. Our top priority should be to get home. Let's go already. Yeah. It's not like we have the supplies, power, or even a real reason to put up a fight. But, what are we going to do if they bring the fight to us? We need to be ready to push them back. If we head inland from here towards Arusha, there's an old castle that's been converted into a stockpiling base. Shalaji Castle. It's currently occupied by some of the Arusian forces that broke off, but we need ammo and fuel. They appear to have converted a freeway into a runway, so we can expect them to have the capacity for air combat. But they'll be easier to handle than Arusha's lead faction. But we can't use all our aircraft to attack. The transport carrying the stolen supplies needs support. Okay, Strider Squadron. 
You head out first and neuter the dogs at the stockpiling base. Rendezvous with Cyclops Squadron, who will bring the transport. Then we bring the supplies back to this base. Got it. Aircraft are our only threat. Sounds good. We'll make it. We're all gonna fly home. Together. Strider Squadron, aircraft prep complete. You're cleared to taxi. No Ocean forces are in the region ahead. No allies here. No need to ID your target. We've set a number of priority targets, focusing on their anti-aircraft weaponry. Okay, team. Need to work. Locked on. and take the fuel and supplies. That's the plan, right, Trigger? You take if you want to live. That's how it was where I grew up. I was just double-checking mission orders, Hushin. Those who want to restore their homelands flock to it. 
like you in every generation. And I've found every last one of them. Watch it, Luffy. We got some lock on you. What do you think of this? Resupply went well. We should be okay on food and fuel reserves for a little while at least. Luckily, the rumor that the Erujian army is advancing nearby is only a rumor. There's no sign of them from the skies. Rumors, rumors, rumors. This is what happens when you lose communications. But we got one good fact. The plane trigger shot down was an advanced model of the XO2 Wyvern. It was developed in the last Continental War. Erugia had a lot up their sleeves. Apparently, they were even supposed to have Belkin aircraft back in the first war. What if Trigger couldn't shoot it down? Just thinking about it gives me chills. We're lucky to be here. In war, you never know what's lurking behind the curtains. But it looks like everything's loose now. Solid chain of command, rest periods after sorties, a battlefield where you know friend from foe. All of that's gone now, lost in a fog of confusion. It feels like a distant dream. Now, just how the hell are we gonna get out of this mess? When we got to the mainland, we found the space elevator's support facility. I guess this was the factory where they built the gigantic structure the elevator traveled in. There was this little girl sitting in front of a mural. When the princess saw her, she shuddered like she'd seen a ghost. The girl had a stuffed animal. This was the day after the shit went down at Tyler Island. She walked right up to the princess, took her hand, and led her into the factory. One thing's for sure, they knew each other. The factory had been converted to a production line for Erujian drones. It was fully automated and chugging along, making drone after drone after drone. Once they got inside, the princess stopped and just stood there. Another girl was there with a man in a lab coat. He was trying to use his keyboard, but she wouldn't let him. She took a data chip and threw it on the ground. Then she walked over to us and took the gun from the prison guard's holster. She pulled the trigger and destroyed the chip.
Later, I found out that the girl with the gun and the one with the stuffed animal were sisters. They were also the granddaughters of Mihai A. Shalaji, the legendary pilot. Gramps used to talk about him. He said Mihai was the top ace from two wars ago. Know any Belkins? Because this guy was a Belkin, and they love to stir shit up. Pitting nations against other nations is a particular favorite of theirs, along with developing hyper-advanced technology. That's right. I'm Belkin, born and raised. My country is gone now. Rather than surrender to its enemy, Belka detonated seven nuclear weapons on its own soil. My people scattered around the globe, living in the shadows of other countries. We had a new purpose, to breed wars. The theory was that through war, we could achieve our destiny and our revenge. I had just finished inputting Mihai's data when his granddaughter came in. She destroyed the only copy I had of the information I squeezed out of him. The girl loved Mihai. No one knew more than her just how hard I pushed her grandfather for that data, how much I made him sacrifice in the process. I promised his granddaughters that his efforts were not in vain, that it could end this terrible war. But in the end, it only caused more chaos and despair. We were responsible for all this damage, all this tragedy. Now, we were going to pay for it. The Erusians, once our allies, would see to that. I had lost the drive to continue my work, even before I noticed Mihai's granddaughters eyeing me with suspicion that one day. I should have stopped then, for all our sakes. Mihai's granddaughter tossed the gun aside. She said if she resorted to killing, she'd just end up like the rest of us. And by us, she meant everyone, including the princess. Like me, the princess was afraid to look into the girl's eyes. She knew that by encouraging her people, she kept the war going. Mihai and his granddaughter were victims of it. And now, they too were paying the price. Is this for Belka? Or for Erugia? My grandfather had only one wish, to continue soaring through the endless skies. That was the only place where he felt alive. But I don't even have a country to call home, let alone the sky. The black forest, the lake, they are no longer mine. Even though those lands were once cherished by my late mother. We have to learn to put that sense of nostalgia behind us and behave like mature adults. My homeland. She's right. It feels so far away now. The woman with the rifle approached me. She was focused on more pressing issues. I checked the computer. All of the data on the legendary ace had already been installed. No, I pulled it before it was completed. However, there are two aircraft that are already scheduled to be manufactured based on that data. We must destroy the factory. This isn't the only one. There are more facilities just like it. And the two planes containing the data will be manufactured at one of those facilities. So, this place runs on solar power that the space elevator generates, right? How about the others? We can destroy the space elevator and cut the power to them. First things first, let's take this one out. I'll show you which locations to target. I stood there, thinking about that mural by the factory's entrance. Harling commissioned it to be painted. I realized that in the background, behind the dancing figures, the artist had painted several space elevators. I understand now. The space elevator wasn't designed to exploit Erugia after all. Good. And afterwards, 
We'll bring down the space elevator itself. No matter why it was built, right now, it's the root of this chaos. I wonder... Yes? I wonder... which path you would choose... when looking at Harling's mirror. Let's get the briefing started. We've done enough air operations. Just let us go home. There's no path for us to get home. Whatever direction you fly, it'll be right into a hail of enemy fire. Earlier, we received a communication via the partially restored general network. Here is what it contained. Apparently, the erosion radicals have gathered around the space element. As it's a source of energy, Give the war mongers a powerful energy source, and you give them the luxury to keep on fighting. In response to this, people from both Osea and Erujia have joined forces and will take down the final arsenal bird in a saturation attack from the air to the sea. Once that's achieved, they'll take the space elevator from the aggressors. Has the source been verified? It could be fake. I hear you. Take a look at what's written at the end. Hey, dumbass, if you want to bring the world back from the brink, go to the lighthouse and see the future. Dumbass? Sounds familiar. It certainly does. It's from those guys we met in Tyler Island, the 444 squad. It's a message to all those looking to end the war. But I also think it's a message for Trigger. I guess we'll do what it says. Okay. Well then, I'm thinking we go roast that damn bird. Looks like we're all on the same page. It's time to end this war. Time to fly, guys. Let's go get that arsenal. Strider Squadron, sortie ASAP. Engagement is forbidden. Don't worry, I know. We need every bird we can call upon, even if they were 
flying with the guy that killed Wiseman. Some of their squadrons are in weird formations. They have manned aircraft and UAVs in slave mode. All this just to keep a war going. Shut us out. No idea what got her going this time. 
seconds. Five seconds to arrival. Two. Inbound. Three seconds remaining. Trap. We'll use a saturation attack. Wait for the signal. Inform the coalition units. We're nearing zero hour. Ten seconds until the united attack of the arsenal bird. Incoming! Five. Four. Everybody, Three, give this two, attack everything you've one. got. Open fire! Separately engage and direct attack. 
attack. HQ, it won't be easy to take down the Oslo Bird with conventional weaponry. All the ace pilots in the world won't save us unless we have a plan. Give us time. We'll see what we can do. You're just thinking about it now? Cover any friendlies, it's hit. Strata 1, Fox 3. JL is a bit stalled. It's readying its APS. Some people were crying. 
crushed. But the kid tabloid went after a safe. There's my sister's with a girl in his hands. Good. What about tabloid? Is he safe? George, you're going up saved. You're safe. Both of them.
is here. Can you see this? This is just one of the many sides of war and what it does. All Erosian soldiers around the space elevator. We surrender now, we will not attack. We can hold them off until support arrives. Our unit surrenders. You guys better not throw away your lives either. Wait there, Princess. We'll get you down. Don't worry about me. Please, just take care of the refugees. I'll parachute down. What? Warning. Trigger, can you hear me? I somehow managed to land. It's your turn now. The carrier ran aground, but that shouldn't be a problem for you. I'll guide you down. 3,000 meters to carrier. You're on course. Looking good, buddy. You're too fast. Lower your speed. Nice work. You pulled off a perfect landing. Well, we're okay for the moment. Now the real challenge begins. I can't just snap my fingers and make a plane. Believe me, I wish I could. Right now, we needed one. Bad. When we were coming over on the boat, I remember seeing an aircraft carrier. That gave me an idea. The Admiral Anderson. The name of an old sailor. When the first drone started attacking, the ship wasn't ready for battle yet. It was still in the dock, getting all rigged up. So they rushed to get her ready. I know about Anderson. In the previous Ocean War, he was the commander of a ship that sent out the last fleet of jets. They say the deck was sloping so bad as it sank, the last plane barely made it off. Those fighters ended the war. That story gives me a little bit of hope, especially at a time like this. We're all in the same boat, like it or not. If this war keeps going on like it is, It'll be the end of everything. The military loaded this thing to the rafters with planes. Some were fighters that were gonna be delivered to bases in occupied territory. It was hit before it could complete the mission. Jackpot. The hangars were loaded with goodies. This scrap queen's got work to do. Trigger, everyone, listen up. The operation was a success. Erusian defense forces have been neutralized and all arsenal birds are down. However, those two new drones buzzing around have royally screwed up our plans. The Ocean and Erusian Coalition's air forces are in a sorry state thanks to them. We might not even have any viable aircraft. According to the Scrap Queen, the drones are trying to use the space elevator's transmission capabilities to send their data to drone manufacturing plants across the continent. They're trying to strengthen their numbers. What's worse, their data contains a depth of war experience, so the newer aircraft will be more tactically advanced. If that's the case, this war will never end. We need to take both drones down no matter what it takes. We'll do it so we have homes to go back to. Well, the Scrap Queen's on our side. 
She says she can make any aircraft fly. This is our final mission. Trigger, let's go. We've got a goddamn war to end. Strider Squadron, take off prep complete. Damn, 
they're fast. All aircraft stay sharp. Intercept now. Salamander 3, Skull 2, lost. Damn it, that was quick. I've never seen anyone fly this fast. Provide support. Friendly lost. Confirmed down. Damn it. The UAVs are equipped with laser weaponry. Watch where their nose is pointing. Strato 1, target acquired. Caution, enemy has a lock. I'll grab their attention. Get the trigger to all the fighting. So three, Nickel. 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 Trigger score to hit. Nickel. We can do it. Aim well and shoot them down. Good. The enemy is still flying normally, though. Keep pushing. The damage has to be adding up. Watch for escape lanes. Oh, 
my son about living through this mission for a day. Choice. The 
Attempting to land. I don't think my plane will make it. Anyway, here goes. Come on, baby, stay with me just a bit more. Can you hear me? Look, it's Trigger. Strider 1 has returned to radar. I did it! That's our trigger! He's a damn hero! <laughs> no doubt. You're better than me. Where's Strider 2? Damn it. Does anyone have eyes on Count? Wish y'all could have seen that. <laughs> you damn fool. What's your position? Watching Trigger climb. I guess it's my fate to watch from down below. Yeah, well, we're all in the same boat there. Yeah, well, I guess we are. We're sending help. Give us your coordinates. Directly under the space elevator. Elevation is minus 500 meters. Minus? Hey, Trigger. You dumbass. Tell me something. What color's the sky up there? Belt. I can't tell you how proud I am to be the first to land at Wait, this Wait, what was that port. transmission? This is Captain K. Nagase of the spaceship Pilgrim One. The ocean of stars in our galaxy is finally within our reach. To the pilot who generously gave this spaceship a place to dock, we are forever grateful. The universe lies ahead of us, waiting to be discovered. At last, we have a gateway to ascend to it, over and over again. It's all coming together for me. Today was the day, the moment of her return. I salute the pilot who gave us all a future. Skies unknown. The path to mankind's vast future remains standing, Grandad. The refugees built the settlement for themselves at the base of the space elevator. A humanitarian mission from Yuktuvania airdropped some supplies for them again today. Thanks to the princess, the whole world was pitching in to help these people. Handing out the relief supplies would have been a perfect gig for that anarchist dude. But since he's dead now, the job went to the guy from Belka, George. I guess Tabloid got that new system he wanted in the end. Mihai's granddaughters are helping out too. Mihai. That cranky old geezer's here with us, too. I never wanted to create anything, and now here I am, clinging to life. Watching as my grandchildren and their generation make a new future for themselves and the world. Is this my punishment, then? All I do is lie here, wasting away. I'll never know the freedom of flying the open skies ever again. I've been grounded, and my wings have been clipped. You know what having peace in the world means? It's being able to die in your own bed at a ripe old age. Peace is what those girls are working so hard for here. We got a bunch more refugees today. And the princess? She's looking to the stars. dark blue, to the heavens and beyond.
Can you hear me? Trigger, everyone, listen up. 